and welcome to the Porn Tech Press channel. This is episode 16 now of the Porsche 924S Turbo 1.8T 20 valve VW Audi build. If you're new to the channel then there's a link for the series uh, if you want to get caught up. Um, it starts off with removing the original engine and everything up to date. Uh, this essentially is a continuation of, the, it's basic one part which I've had split into two. Uh, just because of the time it took. So the first part of this was mounting the uh, intercooler which has gone in where the um, factory radiator was. There's going to be some slight tweaks to that but most of it's there. That's the video for that one. Uh, this one is, or this video, is going to be getting the uh, radiator mounted. Um, so just again making the upper and lower brackets for that, um, getting it situated in the front of the engine bay and hopefully the last main piece of fabrication on the bodywork that I'm going to have to do. So yeah, here's putting the radiator up. Now time to have a look at the radiator and again I've not actually tested this out for size yet so let's have a look and see what we've got. Well done Dorenza for getting us here in one piece. Um, I think that might be slightly over the top, but there we go. Right, let's have a look. Let's see. There we go. Ah. Okay, so that's slightly different from what I was expecting. Uh, it just in terms of the um, mounting points, I thought they were going to be more similar to the um, intercooler, but uh, let's, yeah, hopefully I can work with this. First of all though, I need to check and see how we're doing for sizing. The one thing I can say is this thing is incredibly light and I need to, so that fits no problem at all, which is absolutely great. I reckon the bottom of the rad wants to be no more than 400 mil. So that then will give me enough clearance um, top and bottom. Uh, so I'm not going to be fouling with this at all. So the plan is uh, only slightly changed. So the height of this is uh, currently set to where the bottom of the um, valance will be, which is going to be roughly where the under tray is going to run across. So I'm going to raise this up as much as possible. I did check and the light bar, basically that stays in position everything else rotates so I can actually get quite close to that. I've got a couple of bolts one there and one there so I'm just going to create a bracket which will come down from there just to hold that in position um, probably a little bit higher up so maybe about there or so and then for the underside what I will do is just basically Okay. just take something off of the sides from the brackets uh, that are currently there just bring those out uh, and then just have something coming off to hold that in position it, that's not going to be particularly robust because it's not going to need to be um, these things aren't heavy previously held on by um, I think the old one was just uh, held into position by um, zip ties as many things are so I need to just trim this bit off. There's some other brackets and things and I need to cut these down as well at some point. So having said that I wasn't going to be um, cutting down the longer bits until later, I'm going to get on with that now because there's not enough clearance. It needs to sit underneath the, the light bar. So I'm going to do that. What I have got is and I'll just cut them to size for these. So these are some little grommets that I bought. Just picked these up from Halfords. This is uh, the 
bit that needs to go over is 14 mil. These were 13 mil was the closest I'd get. So I've just drilled those out um, just now using the, the step drill. So they just about fit over. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, just basically mark out where these, the point at which these sit and that will give me the line that I need to then cut to. The height is now set, this is pretty much where I want it and then that should give me the clearance that I need at the bottom which is good. This is all gonna keep it nice and tight as well. Um, I'm gonna have a look once I've sorted out the hoses on the side. So there'll be some, I think, final modification around here and there. So for the base pieces, I've just marked out these two uh, rectangles. So I just quickly trim those and then start drilling and fitting the grommets. plan now is where the little plate's in place and that's all sitting nicely. I am going to have a piece of metal now. I know I said I didn't want to get involved in bending things today but I might just get a strip that's going to be a bit longer along that way and then a bit taller up here just so that I can pass that point then just weld that in. Uh, possibly bend that around at the end and then obviously this bottom plate will get neatened up as well uh, once all of that is done. Okay, both sides of these are now made up, so I just want to tack this into place, not too far back because I'm going to want to bend that round a little bit before I cut it and trim it off. Okay, so that's my starting point. I think what I'm going to do is weld down the inside, then trim the outside and then weld the outer edge and I'm going to do it down to about that point and then just try and see if I can bend this bit around a little bit so I can sort of curve it off and make it look a bit neater. Not sure what happened there with the camera but I've welded the insides sort of and it's all gone a bit lumpy that's because I've had to go over some of them again just because I kept missing the edges each time. So now it's time to trim this back and weld along the edge. Hot, hot. So the final bit I would like to do on this is just bend that radius around so if I can find anything that's going to be strong enough that I could sort of sandwich in that bit 
just create a little radius around that, weld it in, and then be done with it. That's what I wanted. The welding inside is a bit grotty, but those have actually come out looking rather splendid, I think, for, the, for what I was going for. Uh, I think that's going to be quite nice, and that should, I mean, I keep banging on about how there's not much weight in the radiator, but this feels, with that all the way around, that feels really nice and strong. With a lot of these things, actually, I'm going to need to see how they sit. I might do a test. Um, I think I might just need to drill some drain holes in there some of these things so that they're just not sat there full of water okay so lots of hard work there and i actually thought this is how i'm going to design it this is how i'm going to do it and i did it and it was great uh i've now gone to not even fit them on the car but just attach them to the bottom of the radiator and there is a problem of course uh my enthusiasm doesn't make up for the fact that i've not size these properly so this one I'll need to just cut back a little I think I'll do it as little as possible this one however I've got a big problem here because of that rather handsome they are my lower in, uh, radiator mounts uh, so I'm gonna try and put these on the car so home straight now for the bottom mount still obviously got the top ones to do but they are in position and ready for welding. As before, I'm just gonna pop some uh, tacks around the edges just to hold it in place so that I can take the radiator off, take the grommets out so I don't melt them with all the extra heat. That is very good. That feels nice and secure. Yeah, there's a bit of movement there, which I'm not worried about. This, the, the top section, which will be, to be honest now, the job for tomorrow, uh, is gonna be a lot easier. So, well, I shouldn't say things like that, but I think, ow, I think that's gonna be a lot easier. Right, what I'm going to try and do is Drill these holes into a sheet of one mil metal 
um, just have a strip that runs all the way across the top um, try and get those in the right place which might be challenge and then that's going to come basically just be folded up at 90 degrees up to here I'll cut that section across and then try and see if I can get it bent in the right place so that I can then uh, just get that bolted in the rat's out again and I now have a sheet of this strip of one mil steel which needs to really need to go that way and then so holds in the top there to get those right from there I can work out what the the parallel line is so if the holes are slightly off center it's not going to be the end of the world whereas if I bend it and then get them slightly off center that's going to be a bit more of a pain so this gives me a little bit more leeway What I'm going to do, oh you made a mess of this, is just elongate these. Alright. So if you made a bit of a mess of that, just mark on the front. So with with that loosely in place if we think that's sort of where it's going to be straight um, I think what I'll do is probably fold it at the line of the edge of the radiator um, okay so with this loosely fitted to well the top uh, what I can do now is just mark off this line get everything lined up and then fold it and i just need to make sure i mean i was doing the um the clearance for the starter motor obviously just need to make sure that i've actually fold it in the right direction and because i don't have the correct tool for the job what i'm having to do here is clamp down a metal bar over which I can bend the sheet into shape. To further add to the indignity, I'm having to try and bend this by hand as much as possible and I've broken one of the clamps. An epiphany, and I realised that I can use the G clamps, or a couple of them that actually work, to run across the edge of the sheet and use that to clamp in the metal. bit of hammer action to finish the job. Hopefully that is going to not be too far back. After the fold, um, yeah, we'll see. So I just need to now mark off the, the width that I can get on this and then cut that back, work out where the center section is um, so I can cut around that so that then it just fits nicely under the bars.
didn't get it quite right first time, so there's been a bit of jiggery-pokery here just to get everything to fit. And what you can't see from way back here is that I'm cutting the tabs to go over the bolts. Now I have the bracket in place across the top and I just need to get those tabs bent across and then mark out the distance. So I'm just going to take the, the a sort of point at which I want to cut them so that and then get them folded so they seem to be in the right place to be folded get them there to be cut and then I just need to work out um, or position exactly where the drill holes need to go. Hammering the tabs onto the top of the bolts will just mark on the underside uh, where they need to be drilled. So everything's trimmed, holes are drilled. I've forgotten which way stuff's meant to go. So I'm happy with the way that one is on that side. These are slightly out. Right, so that's going to fit nicely. Um, Final bit of tidy up to be done, so just rounding off some of the tabs, removing the sharp edges. In the engine bay, we've got a nice little um, bottom mounts there, nice little circular ones, same on the other side, or you can't really see it from there. And then this nifty little top bracket. And as mentioned, when I need to get this out, those will be loosened off. This will then be able to lift up and that tilted forward and then lift it out. So it doesn't look too shabby. And again, all of this is going to be tidied up when, uh, when it's finished. Right, pleased with that. Um, Radiator is now in next to the uh, intercooler. So uh, good job, um, all sorted. There's still a few bits to do. Even the, the sort of tidier bits um, need to be painted and some trim bits added on. Probably going to have a look at some point and see if I can put some cowling around just to make sure the air is going through properly but we'll see how that goes. I might even just run it and see what I'm doing temps wise and I need to get a fan on there. So not entirely sure what I'm going to do next. I might chuck the end cross member back in, engine on and then start having a look at a few things around it. I may also just actually just get the dust cover done for the bell housing but on the way and have a think about that. I've got now two videos that I'm editing or finishing off the first one and then I'll, I'll do this one separately. So hopefully it followed fairly soon after, otherwise there were problems. You don't need to know that. Uh, we'll see what we're going to get to next. Um, and as always, thanks for watching and hopefully catch you next time. Cheers.